Hey guys, it's your girl Claudia Jordan, and we're back with TGIF. We're here to spill the tea and break down the biggest headlines in the news and on social media. Now sit back, relax, and get ready to sip on this hot tea. Please welcome Al Reynolds. What's up, Al? Uh, what's going on, Claudia? Just another day trying to get this money out here. <laughs> You're right about that. Welcome our special guest co-host for the week, Armand Wiggins. What's up, Armand? What's going on, everybody? I'm good. I'm chilling, trying to get to this tea. Well, you were spilling tea last night. You had people all up in my DM talking to me all crazy about you. Uh -oh. It was like, what oh, happened? Wiggins be talking a lot of trash out there in these streets. Listen, I said what I said, and I stand on business 100%. <laughs> Especially right. on TGIF, right? Okay. Try to take a little easy on the ladies out here, okay? I'm representing <laughs> represent for the ladies. Be nice. Be nice. All right. Um, are y'all drinking this evening? Or maybe I shouldn't even suggest it with this panel. <laughs> <laughs> not, not drinking tonight, Claudia. Okay. Okay. No, we're, we're still doing the water diet. We're still doing the water diet, but it won't change much. I can't imagine how it's going to be towards the end of the week when you actually do have a cocktail with us. Like, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, y'all. Um, real quick announcement. Uh, it, it was announced. Uh, I was trying to keep the cat in the bag for a little bit, but I am part of it. They just uh, announced it today. I'm part of College Hill season three, the celebrity edition. So I'm here uh, work on this show. So wish me luck, you guys. I'm at an HBCU. Al, I know you went to one. And oh, um, I didn't go to one. I teach it one. I've taught oh, it too. But yeah, I teach it one. Okay. My bad. And um, yeah, I'm super excited. The cast was, was revealed. Uh, uh, Tamar Braxton's here, Saucy Santana, um, Black China, Nick Young, the former basketball player, and Carlos Miller, who was 85 boys, and he's a, a comedian, and myself. And um, it's going to be very, very lit. There's a lot of personality in the house. So I'm going to be doing this for the next uh, month here, and we are here down in New Orleans. So wish me luck, y'all. Please, I'm going to need them good vibes. So, yeah. All right. Let's get into these Topics. Some interesting changes are being made over at the Real Housewives of Atlanta franchise. Portia Williams and Kenya Moore will be returning to the show for season 16. We haven't seen Portia since season 13, and many felt that she was running away from the smoke of allegedly stealing her husband, Simon Gabodia. What do you think about the news? Go ahead, Armand. Well, I think this is phenomenal. I said this yesterday. I said that I'd rather see Portia and Kenya, and, you know, maybe Marlo instead of Candy. My whole thought is this. As long as Candy's not there, it's a win, okay? So I love <laughs> Portia, though. I'm going to be honest with you. I really do like Portia. I think Portia brings a lot of spunk and, you know, funny to, to the house part. So I think that's great. I got to ask, because you had a really strong opinion about Candy. What do you have against Candy? Well, I just think, I just, I think that Candy just holds grudges. And I think that Candy doesn't really add any entertainment value other than crying and being upset and then trying to take everybody's money. Now, Armand, I watch your show sometimes. <laughs> you all work this too. It's kind of ke giving kettle calling pop black here. Listen, Candy uh, is boring. She's boring. She adds no value other than tenure. You know, just because she's first been there real so star long. on the show, celebrity, multi-millionaire. Now that doesn't count for anything. I think that it does, but I think it's time for her to move around. You know, she, you have the tenure, you have the money. It's time for some spunk, some new personality, some new blood. Candy has to go. Shout out to Kenya Moore and shout out to Portia for becoming, you know, for coming back onto the show. And shout out to Candy Burris. <laughs> Al, what are your thoughts? Listen, I'm just glad that they're bringing back the OGs. Like, I like that uh, in regards to trying to find new women to put on this platform. And honestly, I, I miss Portia. And Candy leaving probably freed up some budget to give Portia the money that she wanted to come back to the show because the streets are saying that's what the kid, what the deal was about. She wasn't getting paid what she was being asked. So now because Candy's gone, the budget is there. Portia can come back. I've always kind of liked and followed Portia ever since she put the Underground Railroad underneath that church. Anything that ridiculous coming out of her mouth and watching her growth, it was all great television for me. And let's not forget 265 days of the year. She gave us a lot of quotable. <laughs> yeah. she, she actually has a cute personality. She gave us a lot of quotable yeah. things. She gives I think the show probably needs to go back to all the OGs. I mean, I think that's what made the show great. And I think when they, you know, when you start remixing things, you know, when you have a classic movie, and then they make a remake, remake or a part two or part three. It's always like it's never as good as the original, you know. Would you and go they, back on the show? Yeah, that's what I, I want to know. 
I would, but I'm not an OG, and I also don't have like a real Atlanta connection now. I mean, I sometimes go there to work, but um, I'm not an OG. But if they ever would have asked me, I would never turn that down. I love Bravo, but I think I'm more of an Osma girls trip type of girl now. I think mm. I do like a one season wonders. Mm. You know, I think that would make sense. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm in a different place now, and I definitely have a lot more than when I when I was on that show, and I know more, but. I'll go on the girls' trip. I would love that. Or <laughs> the Dallas reboot with black girls. How about that? That actually happened. Or there. maybe you and Candy can do a spinoff. <laughs> maybe you can kiss my ass. Why you want to put her with Jen? Oh, wow. But you know what? I would work with Candy because she knows how to make a bag. Okay? She really I'll does. Do my, she do. I'd she do how to do that. Uh, yeah, she knows how to do it. i with my yeah. peers. Okay. Lizzo's sexual assault accusers were not pleased with Lizzo's invite to the Grammys. Their attorneys are claiming that there is a double standard at play and said that if a white man faced the same sort of sexual harassment, racism, and fat shaming allegations, he doesn't think they would have received the same opportunity that Lizzo got. I'm going to ask y'all what you think about this, but I'm going to just say something real quick. This reverse racism thing that they be trying to pull in America is crazy. If a white man did this, they would never get away. You've gotten away with it for centuries. What are you talking about? But what are you talking about? Drug addicts, Charlie Sheen was out here passing out HIV like Skittles and was making $2 million a week on his show. And we just, you know, it, it, the list goes on and on about people we can say had horrific uh, indiscretions, if you want to call them that. And they still got awards, Grammys, Emmys, all kinds. And so miss me with the bullshit. OK, Al, what do you think? I think she shouldn't have done it. And that's just my honest opinion. I think that she asked the courts to dismiss, to dismiss the cases. The court said no. So it's a hard pending, meaning there may be some validity to it because it couldn't, it wasn't able to be dismissed. Now, this is the tricky part. We forgot all about her sexual assault case until she appeared back on that stage way too soon. And because of that, we now are back throwing tomatoes at her. And I don't think that's good. I think her, her PR team should have thought about this a little bit better. I think her management team and record label thought that maybe it had, the, the, the page had turned and it hadn't. She needs to stay gone until her legal battles are complete. Until then, you're gonna constantly get this ugly pushback because you look like an accused sexual assault person getting away with something. And in this case, she wants people to know, I'm not getting away with it, I didn't do it. Well, this is not the way to do it as it relates to public opinion. Arma, what do you think about the allegations against her as when it comes to fat shaming? Well, first of all, I wanna just say, I totally 100% agree with Al. Um, the allegations with her and as far as her and the fat shaming, I believe she did it. I believe mm -hmm. that Lizzo is a class A narcissist. I don't believe that mm -hmm. she is this girl's girl. I believe Lizzo wants to be skinny, but she was bullied by the public to being fat and remaining fat because when she tried to hide away and lose weight, everyone shamed her because fat was her brand. See, that's the problem. That's right. When you move into that space and you pander to a certain community, when you try to d uh, divert from that, Mm -hmm. You, they won't support you anymore. She That's tried right. to go skinny, but mm -hmm. they didn't accept her. So I believe all of those things. And I do believe, I don't believe that, you know, if a white man were to do it, um, you know, they would have gotten so much backlash. I believe if a man in general, black, brown, white, gay, whatever, just a man in general, him being accused for that, he would have lost it all. So I do believe there's a gender bias. I don't believe there's much of a color bias there. Mm. So I believe a black man, any man couldn't have went and walked on that stage. She would have lost it all. But because she's a woman and she's a plus size woman and she's a black woman, there's a little bit more of lenience there for her, I believe. <laughs> hmm. I believe so because it's it's sympathy there. You know, she couldn't have did it. She's plus size. She's Lizzo. She makes the feel good music, not Lizzo. I do agree with that. I do. I do believe people probably will be like, well, how's she fat shaming? Because it happens to her all the time. I, I will agree with you on that. Um, I do think we have a ton of double standards though in our country. And I just think it depends on the person. When you like someone, whether you don't like someone, um, I do think that plays a big part in how seriously we take these allegations. You know what I'm saying? I, I, uh, but me, let me just say, me pointing out that double standard with white men does not mean I think that Lizzo was innocent of all of this, because I'm not really sure. And it, 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 there were a lot of people that came through, that came forward. Right, right. And, and, and plus, okay. we don't ever want a victim shame. I just think it's yeah. different when it's a woman being accused than a man. Because, I mean, we believe 
We believe the victims immediately when it comes to a man, but a woman, she's able to walk and pass out Grammys. Crazy. She's, she's able to present at the Grammys. Oh, present, yeah, <laughs> yeah. She's able to present at the Grammys. She's able to present at the Grammys. That's wild. All right, Darius Jackson is on social media playing the victim. In a series of tweets, he wrote, when I tell you that they make men go through hoops when it comes to seeing their own kids, then to have the audacity to throw the fatherless home statistic at your face. He also wrote, too many Ahabs have given these Jezebels a voice and platform to call the shots. Okay, what is that? All right, well, what are your thoughts on this? Armand, let's go to you on this one first. What do you uh, think? I'm going to be honest with you. I believe, you know, he is the victim. I believe Kiki Palmer is another narcissist. I believe her and her mother, uh, they belittled that man. Um, and Kiki Palmer knows that she is the American princess and she will have the public on her side because of her celebrity. So they bullied that man. Yeah, Darius may be a little touched and a little slow, but they know <laughs> they have more power and influence and they know that the public will be on Kiki Palmer's side. So they bullied that man and they're trying to use their fame, fortune and influence to make him look like he's crazy. While her mother is an abuser and Kiki Palmer is an allower of the abuse that her, her mother and her put on to Darius. I believe this 100%. is awesome. Armand, Allegedly. you can come back anytime. You can come back anytime. I was on this. We've talked about this before, and I was thrown off the <laughs> island because I said exactly what you said. I felt like that her and her mom were weaponizing their celebrity. They know that Kiki Palmer is, is loved by our community, and 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 she's we we known her for so long. And I just felt like that he was really no i don't want to say that's the wrong word i really felt like he wasn't given a fair shake in this and i think they know exactly how to tailor things and how to to share things that are going to keep kiki looking like uh the positive person or like the victim and i said this once we saw those court documents and he revealed all those emails all those text messages and then when we saw the audio from the mom i was like hold up this is really exposing a different side than the the darling of America, Black America that we love so much. And I'm so glad you said that because I was feeling like I was the only one that thought and interpreted like that. So I'm here with you. When you're right, you're right. And let me I tell you really quick, I know that for a fact because he, they sent me all of those emails and all of I'm the one that That's put right. that information out. So they sent me the scratches, the cuts, the marks, the emails where she was admitting to hitting him and all of these things. Right. Now, what in what world could a man or he had admitted and apologized to hitting her and that would have been swept under the rug? Like everyone just forgets about that. She being caught on audio saying, I apologize for hitting you. I shouldn't have been putting my hands on you. And right. no one's heard that. It was all okay. It's BS. It's bullshit. And that pisses me off. I find it really hard to believe with Kiki's track record. Yes, we have been uh, we have been fans and knowing of Kiki Palmer for a long time. And we've never heard any negative drama about her before she got with this man. And I have been, a, uh, we've all probably been with people that have gaslit us and have provoked us and pushed us. I am not giving him a pass that he's just all the way innocent. I don't think Kiki just started attacking her baby daddy for no reason and scratched him because he was just sitting there minding his business, being a good father. I think him and his brother are opportunists. They both have a pattern of abuse. Where's Kiki Palmer's pattern of abuse? Where, where, uh, where is it? Kiki Palmer's uh, pattern of abuse? A, she, she, wrote a a book. she wrote a book in 2017 about being an abuser and whooping her man's ass and putting her hands. Oh, oh, where's the receipt? I don't. <laughs> I, well, oh send me the God. book, Armand. Send I'll me send the it book. to you after the show. We're going to have to send bring me this the book. back up. I have I'm the team Kiki Palmer. Girl, <laughs> and then, oh wait a minute, Claudia. You said Darius has a has a track record. What track record do you know? <laughs> Their of whole him family being girl? allegedly is a family of abusers. No, 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 not family. Blood. We're talking about him. What what the family does have has nothing to do with what this young man did. Show me. Well, you guys are tying in Kiki's mother to Kiki's us, so I can tie in his brother. That's because me. she's okay. got audio. She, we got audio. I'm team Kiki. We got. Audio I think he's a gaslighter. We got audio of her abusive behavior. I mean, didn't we say on this show many times that physical abuse as well as verbal abuse is both abuse? Let's just be clear. From a man Let's or a be, woman is both abuse. Can I, if he would have been agree. online talking to Kiki like that, you guys would have been in an uproar if him and his mother would have been online talking to Kiki Palmer like that over the phone. The, the world would have been agree. in shambles. 
that verbal abuse is absolutely verbal uh, is abuse as well. Been there, done that. And as of someone that has been in these shoes, I have had people do this to me. And the evidence they provide, their one side of evidence made me look totally bad and then look totally innocent. I just think there's a lot more to the story than T just attacking this man for man for no reason. That's what I think, my opinion. But that's what TJIF is about. <laughs> that's what TJIF does. Opinions. We don't got to agree. <laughs> we do not have to agree. All right, coming up next, Kenya Moore opens up about her divorce. And later, a woman finds herself in a sticky situation on a date. Keep it here. Hey, Kiki, I got your back. Don't worry, my, mind these heathen, these men. We'll be right back. Oh. Scene one of the three, take one. I thought we'd be on the same page about this, and we're not. How do I know the way I'm going to respond to it? I want you to get the vaccine, because I want you to be safe. What if you end up in the hospital? That's what I'm scared of. If you was to die, man, that would literally kill me, man. I hug you. Yeah. <laughs> if it made you feel that way, bro, I would probably do. I love you too. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. Freedom. It's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear, to jog where we please, to wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. Welcome back to TGIF Soulmates. Drop some flames in the chat if you're here for this show. We have Armand Wiggins joining myself and Al for the whole week. And you, it's going to be spicy because it already has been. All right. <laughs> yes. Kenya Moore spilled some tea about her ex-husband, Mark Daly. Kenya shared that during the divorce, Mark refused to sign the papers and even tried to fight for their marriage. She also shared that Mark already has a new fiance. Do you think it's strange when people move on so quick quickly? Al, what do you think? Um, I think when you have uh, uh, dissension, right, they, they haven't been getting, to get, been getting along for a while, you know, he doesn't have to wait till he signs the paperwork to move on. He probably moved on mentally like years ago, to be honest with you. And that's what it sounds like when you find someone that quick. He, he probably was has been talking to her for a little while. Now, the thing here with him and Kenya is he seems a tad bit calculated and a tad bit messy so it could be that he's moved on or saying that he has a new fiance just to get underneath her skin because from what i understand isn't kenya well claudia you would know better than us isn't kenya in new york right now and she's also certain that he hasn't seen the kids since march and she's in new york like why isn't he taking time or making time to see his little his, his child however he's got time to announce and show his new fiance Something about that is just a tad bit too convenient. Yeah, she's in New York doing the Breakfast Club right now. Um, Armand, what do you think about this? I think you know what I don't. I think he should move on, get rid of her. She's a, she drives him crazy. She's annoying. He's over it. He's moved on in his mind. You know what? <laughs> she's. A, I don't want to be a part of your press run. And if you're going to include me, include my new girlfriend. We're living a beautiful <laughs> life. I'm getting married. Good riddance to you, Kenya Moore. Have fun on the housewives. Me and my new girlfriend. We're probably going to make another baby. 
<laughs> well, that's if, that's if you believe he has Arma, a girlfriend. You know that's you know that's Claudia's good girlfriend, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Listen, you just you just dig it. <laughs> I'm loving this. Can he come back next week? <laughs> I love. They all love. It's okay because I'm strong enough. Y'all can gang up on me. We gotta go to HR. Listen, Watch. It's funny that you're so happy that he has a girlfriend. I'm actually shocked that his fiance is a girl and has a girlfriend. Mm. So, um, you know, anyways, I've been on the phone with Kenya Moore and hearing him in the background ranting and raving, being extremely cruel. So I'm glad that she is getting her divorce. She has been asking for him to file the papers. And I'm so sick of every time it's a breakup. Men are so arrogant to think that everybody wants them and that everybody wants to stay. He was trying to keep her back because it gives him relevancy so his restaurant can stop getting C's and start getting some G's as in some money. So let's just be clear about that. Second so, wait, ball, I, I want to be clear. I want to be hold, clear. Hold on, let me, let me finish my rant. I think he's very bitchy and very mentally and, and verbally abusive because I've heard it as a witness mm. on the phone with Kenya, dragging her being in a video with Jay Z and Jermaine Dupri 40,000 years ago. You mad about that and you married this woman. So, Kenya has been asking him. She said she was giving him, if you watch the, the interview on the Breakfast Club, she said he kept moving the goalposts. She said, Yes, I'll give you this. Here we are. I'll give you this. And he kept moving the goalposts. I think this is someone that wants relevancy. And ladies, never trust a straight man with a nose ring. Mm. That's now that's that's a low blow. That was very nasty. It is. And I, that's I that's, that's very that's very bad. Wow. And then I also have a I have a problem with you know, and I understand that that's your friend, but why do we always have to talk about his sexuality as a question mark because things didn't work <laughs> out? I don't think that's fair. And honestly, in the dialogue, it's it's somewhat immature and premature. Like if <laughs> if if he's so if he's so not into women, how did he pull Kenya Moore? Oh, why was she so talk about it? Now? Let's not have I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I, I'm just <laughs> asking basic questions that I want that I would like Ow. answers to. And Ow. my thing is, you can't get mad when you get with a pretty boy and he doesn't want you anymore, and all of a sudden he's gay. You like the boy with the nose. Like, why do women do that? All of a sudden, the man doesn't want you anymore. He moves on to a new girl, and now he's right. got to be gay. But right. why do men always assume that the, the that the man doesn't want you anymore when she's the one trying to get him <laughs> and his nose ring to sign the divorce papers, and he's acting very bitchy. So because he, it, it, because it, he's not wrong. signing the because he's not signing the, the paperwork, he no. is. You're shocked that he's interested in women. <laughs> no, I'm saying something about that's just not adding up. I'm Al. This is a very this conversation right here. <laughs> Why are you coming for me? Move, we all move, asking move, the same questions. We all asking the same questions. Why are you coming for me? We, it's a question. I'm not coming for you, but you seem like you want to come for me, and I'm trying to keep it cute. No, I'm just asking a question. We talk about this a lot on the, we talk about this a lot on this show that when something uh, goes left, women use that as a reason. And we, well, I, I personally, yeah, we do. We, huh? do. we do. There's a lot of things that we do. You're right. You are so right about that. And sometimes the shoe fits. I'm not saying he's gay. I'm saying he's bitchy. That's what I'm saying. I think he's very bitchy uh, and okay. I think he's very petty. I'm not saying he's gay. Yes, I'm throwing shade at the nose ring. And I did say a straight man with a nose ring, if you remember. I did say that. But I thought you, I'm sorry, I misunderstood because I thought you said you didn't think he, you were, you were surprised that he's interested in women. It's what I thought you said at the top of the conversation. Yeah. If he's I misheard so, you, I apologize. No, it's okay. And, and maybe I wasn't that clear. You know, he has a white woman too, by the way. But anyways, I'm not here for Mark Daly. It's very obvious. And I'm just sick of the narrative that Kenya has to beg someone to be with her when she's asking him, Ooh. begging him to sign the papers. <laughs> You know how divorce goes, Al. They be getting. I do. We been through them. Yes, it does. All right, an intimate <laughs> uh, leaked video has gained Drake lots of attention on social media. The video has been circulating, allegedly showing the rapper laying in bed while swinging his private parts around. Fans on social media are saying, from the looks of it, Drake is packing. I saw the video. Can, what are y'all thoughts? I don't want to be accused of, you know, hating on this man's penis size. So I'm going to let y'all go for it. Well, listen, I'm always here for a good nude leak, okay? Especially on a man. Okay, and I definitely have a nose ring. Um, so, but listen, to be honest, I really want to know how does this stuff get leaked? Like, at some point, I feel like this is their doing. You know what I mean? Because a person of Drake's caliber, you have to know you're just not sending out nudes. You know what I mean? At some point, you, you're you like, I'm not sending out any you know, nude photos and stuff. So I feel like, you know, sometimes they want this stuff to get out for whatever reason. That's just my opinion. But it was it was a nice look for me. I was here for it. 
So, I, you know, Claudia, I couldn't wait till we got to this story because I wanted to know, did he pass your one potato, two potato uh, rule or what, what was the deal? It looked like it was two potatoes, but they were mashed potatoes. Oh, mm. oh so it was soft. Yeah, and maybe he just started the process and he wasn't hard yet, but it was a it was a little bit flimsy for me. Got it. Okay. It was what did flimsy. you think? It was flimsy and it was narrow. What did you think, Al? I didn't see the video. That's why I, I couldn't wait till I got to this because I wanted to ask you because uh, Armand, Claudia has a one potato, two potato uh, measuring stick. She uses her hands. And so oh, if okay. they don't get to, <laughs> if they don't get to two potato, no, she said one potato and a half should work with you, but she prefers two potatoes. What's the right? Oh, oh, okay. oh, I don't think it was giving potato that like it was a little skinny. We were oh, maybe was it giving pencil? Under... Slightly. Oh, Al, you need to somebody send out a video. Well, haven't you seen the video? Al, I will send you the video right it. now. And look at the video, Al. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. It, it did look like he was filming himself jerking, uh, pleasuring oh. himself in the mirror. And maybe he, I don't know how that got out, Armand. I'm with you with that. How did that get out? Did you send it to a girl and then she blasted you? And a star as big as Drake. You do not, sir, you know, exactly. you do not need to be doing all this. Like, you don't get the girl without doing any of that. So, yeah. Anyways, it was giving soft. Mm. All right. Elon Musk announced that we can expect one billion humanoid robots by the end of the year. Great. How would you feel if humanoid robots became part of our daily life? Well, those potatoes will never be soft. Armand, what do you think? <laughs> you know what? Like, I'm back and forth because in my mind, I would love a pet robot until that thing like turns around and kicks my ass and like kills me, you know, but we have the little robot machines here in LA. They like deliver food and stuff. I think they're so cool and so cute, but they also have a mind of their own. So I don't know. I'm afraid because, because I feel like uh world domination is coming soon and, and it started with that damn Tesla. And now it's about to be a freaking robot car, uh, robot walking around in our, in our home. So I don't know. I'm not really comfortable with it, to be honest. But didn't Al, didn't Tesla just recall like 2 million cars, like almost all their fleet? If they would right. mess up on cars, can you imagine the damage that could get done if one of these robots goes rogue and starts stabbing everybody up or- Yeah, you don't want to that's talk, scary. Like, it, it, What do you well, think and, about this? And can you we'll, actually sleep in your house with that robot there? Like, what? I, I don't know that I would be comfortable. I think I would want to see more I would want to see more people have the robot and it's and it, it works for them and there's no issues. But other than that, if he says one billion, the problem that I have with that is I'm also afraid that they may be taking jobs out of our community. Mm. You know what I mean? And that's that's where the rub is for me because you got to watch people, super wealthy people like Elon Musk. You know they have agendas, and to put a billion of these out there and teaching them how to do the jobs that we usually handle, I don't know. It seems like a conspiracy to me. 1,000%, one-seventh of the world's population, we're at 7 billion, 7 and change. You want to put a billion robots? Of course they're going to take jobs. They already have screens up at McDonald's, so the high school kid that wants to make $15 an hour to kind of pay his way through, through some things or have a little spending money doesn't have those jobs. We already are scanning our own groceries in the grocery store. Like, there are so many jobs I've already gone by in lieu of technology. I hate mm -hmm. these robots. I hate them. I think they're a horrific idea. And... If you want to know what's going to happen in the future, look at a lot of the movies. They've been giving us hints all throughout our lives about what is coming. Those are not people's imaginations. Those are the the, the, the playbook to me of what's going to happen. Oh, of course they're going to have jobs because those greedy muff, those greedy people like, you know, Elon Musk, they're like, oh, we're paying these people too much money an hour. We can just make robots and then we right. never have to pay a person ever again. And that's horrible. Yeah, you Do we know how much it costs? Do we know how much it costs to create these robots? Mm. I don't know, but you have a lifetime of, a, you have probably 30, 40 years of free labor from them. So it's right, whatever it is, right. I'm sure it's worth, you know what I mean? No mm -hmm. health insurance, no one's complaining. But they're also putting chips in people's brain. They're testing those out too, to like make us like robots. And I, I think that's a little weird, like the, the mm -hmm. chips in the brain, because at some point, like, is there going to be some like database where they can like start to control people? That's my fear. I feel like we're about to be controlled to do things. Mm -hmm. I'm That's glad scary. I'm 50 and I'm not going to be here much longer. <laughs> you said you got 15 this, years, woman. I got 15 good summers left. Like, like y'all can have this bullshit. I'm not here for this nonsense. Good luck. All right, coming up next, a woman finds herself in a sticky situation during a date and later find out why Taylor Swift is receiving so much backlash. Oh my God, poor Taylor. We'll be right back.
How you been liking it, Dustin? I love it here. I love sparring with you. I love talking trash with Claudia. TGIF. What y'all drinking on? Buttery Chardonnay, my go-to when it comes to spilling this tea. 1942, baby. It's been a celebration all week. Every weekday. Yeah. Are you going to have any left? I'll buy the big bottles, Al. <laughs> <laughs> How big is it? <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's not be sexually harassing our co-hosts this early in the show. Not saying we won't, it's just going to be this early. <laughs> on Fox Soul. You see certain things get reincarnated in your children. My daughter is very much inspired by my wife's artistic pursuits. So my daughter started making necklaces. She makes what we call affirmation fashion. I tell her every day that your black is beautiful. Your black is beautiful. Your black is beautiful. And if there's anything better than being beautiful, it's being smart. And if there's anything better than being smart, it's being kind. And reaffirming that every day is our method of making sure her chin never drops. My dad wasn't around. And I remember riding a bike and falling off and cutting myself. And me never would just wanted to get back on it. People ask, how your children learn how to ride a bike? And you did. I didn't teach them. I just created an environment where they taught themselves. And all I had to do was be there. Welcome back to TGIF. You know, we are always trying to give y'all the cheat codes in life to make your life a little bit easier. And today is no different. Um, you know what? I'm going to talk about this wild grain situation. I, I use wild grain because I'm always cooking for my friends and they're always coming over. And like, it gets to be a lot of different palettes and people like different things. So it's always nice to add a new element to the things that I'm, I know I'm good at cooking. And wild grain comes through and the food is always really flavorful. Um, Al, I know you are a big fan of wild grain and you've spoken about some of your favorite items. What's your favorite yes. item that you've tried? My favorite item are probably like the peach pockets, the apple pockets and the chocolate pockets. See how good they look? Oh my gosh, the crust is A1, just like the pasta and the bread. I like everything, honestly, Claudia, but if I had to pick one, it would be the peach pockets. I know you love those peach pockets. All right, Wild Grain is the first ever broke, uh, bake from frozen subscription box for sourdough breads, fresh pastas, and artisanal pastries. Every item bakes from frozen in 25 minutes or less, no thawing required. And you can now fully customize your wild grain box so you can get any combination of breads, pastas, and pastries. You can even build a box of only breads, only pastas, or only pastries if that's what you like. Now for a limited time, you can get $30 off the first box plus free croissants in every box when you go to wildgrain.com slash tea to start your subscription. You heard me, free croissants in every box and $30 off your first box when you go to wildgrain.com slash tea. That's wildgrain.com slash tea, or you can use promo code T, that's T-E-A, at checkout. Promotional considerations furnished by Wild Grain. Now that we got you hungry, let's get back to some more topics. All right, y'all. A woman mm, found herself right. in a sticky situation during a date. Check out this clip. Mm, this is why I cannot go on dates. I do not go on dates because this is exactly why. What do you mean if he's in a stolen vehicle? Like, what do you mean? First of all, it's a um old Honda. You got me in a Honda stolen. Like, I could say it was like a Benz, like a BMW, but you got me in a stolen Honda and we get caught for this. <laughs> Once again, we continue to race to the bottom, and I'm glad I'm 50. <clears throat> what would you have done in this situation? Someone's on, I got you on a day in a stolen vehicle. Armand, you're laughing over there, so I know you have something on the tip of your tongue. You're just dying to share with us. Do share. Well, you, you know what? I'm only laughing because, you know, 
Uh, I have a pass. I stole a vehicle before. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> so I, can only, I, I can only imagine what that would be like. Oh, my, what are you doing remember. still in a car? Yes, yeah, it was a long, I don't want to get long winded, but yeah, child, I was on probation for four years and the whole thing. Yeah, I had stole a hold car. On, hold on, hold on, hold on. Al. <laughs> hold on. We got, a, we got a thief in our presence. What <laughs> kind of uh, screening process are we going through with our guest host? We got Listen, hey, criminals on our panel. HR. Here. <laughs> Listen, I, I paid my debt to society. I paid my debt. Listen, I was 19 years old, and I and I I didn't know where I was going. I didn't know what I was. My friend told me they can help me get a car, so they they got an ID and they told me all I need to do is you know force this force this signature. I did it. I didn't know. I got me a nice 2005 drop top Mustang. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. But it was a good time. I mean, maybe he's young. You know, he had to try some things out. He really wanted to impress the girl. But I think the bigger problem is she's mad that it wasn't a more name brand. So I feel like. Bro, you know what? Kick her to the curb and go get somebody that's going to appreciate your hard work. And She's your going sacrifice. to get <laughs> <laughs> But she ain't the one anyway because she ain't going to really appreciate the sacrifices that you have to make for you and the family. <laughs> you know, Armand, I think you're my polar opposite. Uh, I always defend I'm women and, no matter what, and you defend men no matter what bullshit <laughs> they do. So I think we are polar opposites here, and, and I think that's good. Uh, Al, that. what are your thoughts on this ratchet ass shit? Oh, it is ratchet, you know, but honestly, this is why I tell, I only have one niece and I have 11 nephews. This is why I tell my niece, you cannot just meet a person, a guy offline or and allow him access to you so easily. Like I tell her, don't allow the first date for the guy to come pick you up from home because he should know where you live because you don't know, you don't know this guy's background. And you probably shouldn't, you probably should meet him at the restaurant the first date if you don't know him well, because if not, things like this have the ability of happening so i just for me when i see this type of stuff i always think about the safety of the female it just really concerns me that she really could be in a, in a bad situation now armand we know you're about that criminal life well you've evolved since it's not good. <laughs> but has anybody else have any stories where someone kind of caught you up in some uh, crime because i remember a guy picked me up we were in philly he picked me up from the airport and then he pulled over to some shady street and a drug dealer got in the back seat and he did a whole cocaine deal right in front of me. And I was like, what is going on? And so I got caught up in some stuff like that. Has that ever anything, any criminals? Now, I'll be honest with you, that has happened to me before. <laughs> my, no, I, <laughs> I felt it and that's why I wanted to share. I felt it. So, like, <laughs> you walked right into that trap, I, buddy. I, I, no, really quick, no, I was with one of my friends. And I, now, this at this time, I had no idea. But I was one of my you friends. You never seemed to have an idea. No, I really had no idea. Like, I guess they were doing some fraudulent activity. But long story short, you know, we're at the red light and we get surrounded by the SWAT. And like, we're I'm thrown on the ground. I'm on top of the car. And I'm thinking, what the hell is going on here? But they were looking for my friend because my friend had some kind of like, like fraudulent deal in another state with this woman. It was just a mess. But I ended up getting away because I had no idea. But... You know, he ended up getting arrested, detained, and locked up for it. it. But it was it was very very scary. I was a lot younger then, though. But um, yeah, Al I my is always my police. friend. <laughs> <I'm> younger. <laughs> okay, I'm on day two. We're on day two, and we already have two felonies out of you. I cannot wait till we uh, <laughs> keep it locked because coming up next, find out what other felonies Armand Wiggins has been involved in, and also why Taylor Swift is receiving backlash. And later, someone finds an unexpected critter in their ear. We'll be right back. And hopefully, our mom will still be with us after the break. <laughs> <laughs> My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood. But one day, she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual. And uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn. And she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you and we'll figure it out. you been liking it, Dustin? I love it here. I love sparring with you. I love talking trash with Claudia. TGIF. What y'all drinking on? Buttery Chardonnay, my go-to when it comes to spilling this tea. 1942, baby. It's been a celebration all week. Every weekday. Yeah. Are you going to have any left? How about a big bottle, gal? <laughs> <laughs> How big is it? <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's not be sexually harassing our co-hosts this early in the show. Not saying we won't. It's just going to be this early. <laughs> on Fox Soul. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers. 
the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. There was a time in my life where I was extremely homesick. I decided that I needed a pet. When I first saw a turtle, my heart was full. He jumped up and kissed me and like jumped right into my arms. I immediately went up to the volunteers at the shelter and said, I want him, like, he's gotta come home with me. Not anything but lonely. Every day with turtle is a perfect day. Welcome back to TJF. We were chatting a little bit uh, during the break. Armand, your mom's an Aries as well? Yes, that, that's why I like you. Wait, her birthday is you, March You 22nd. like it and you hate me at the same time. I <laughs> yes, but I love my mother. I love okay. my mother. She's the best thing that's ever happened to me. No, like, I love, so I'm already sold, but I definitely know you now, for sure. You know me, right? If you're a March I, Aries, I definitely know you. I'm a, I'm an Aries, but like okay. I was saying in the break, I said, I don't care if I'm right, wrong, <laughs> if I believe in something, it could be 1,000 of y'all and just me, I'm like, nope, I stand on this. Mm. I don't care about your receipts and I don't care about your evidence. They don't exist to me. Um, what's your mom's name? Shut her out real quick. Ariel, shout out to my mom. Shout out Ariel, cause uh, yeah, that's the real hey, Aries mom. woman. That's hey, the Aries mom. woman for sure. I love your mother already. <laughs> Perfect woman in my book. All right, moving on. Taylor Swift is receiving backlash for failing to acknowledge Celine Dion on stage to accept her Grammy. Do you think this backlash is unnecessary? Al, what do you think about this? Do you think it was on purpose? Do you think she should have paid more attention? What do you think? I think, you know, Celine Dion is a legend. You definitely should have given her a hug, uh, a, a look in the eye. She gave her, she played her dust. Now, this is what I thought so super fascinating about it. Her PR team, they do not play around. When they got backstage, I guess her PR team was watching what was trend trending on Twitter and saw that people were pissed. I mean, I have never seen white people turn on white people like this before <laughs> in the entertainment business. They wanted Taylor Swift gone. So you know what that PR team did? That PR team leaked a picture of Taylor backstage hugging C Celine to try to neutralize this. This was some good PR, entertainment, white shade, top of the line, top of the year. Hey, I was here for all of it. Was that shadier or the moment when Mariah Carey walked past Stevie Wonder and he was over here holding the mic over? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now that was a moment. I was like, oh my God. And another Aries, Mariah's like, don't see it. I don't see it. <laughs> well, um, you know, they say Taylor's a bit of a mean girl, no? Yeah. Well, that's kind of what I feel. I feel, you know, that's this is the problem. You know, Taylor is, you know, that porcelain white princess. And America has given her all of this power. So at some point, Celine Dion, for what? I don't need to acknowledge you. I'm getting up here and I'm going to crash everybody's damn dream as I win album of the year for the fourth time and break another record and tell every artist in the crowd not to drop music because I'm dropping another album in April. So that means I'm going to win all award season next year. And the summer and spring is mine of this this year. So, you know, I'm just going to devastate everyone. And, you know, who gives a shit? That's what Taylor did to me. But I do think that she should have acknowledged Celine in some way. But you built her up to this point. She's just a monster at this point with a smile. And this, am... listen, and I'm never mad at white people doing white people things to white people. I, I, I guess my black side just don't see it. I don't get the, and I maybe I'm not supposed to. I'm, I'm like, what? what? I, I, oh, I, she's white. Is she's it like the Pumpkin Eye and Keish? I just don't see. I don't understand. Taylor Swift is all American music. That just is what it is. She is the music industry. She's the white people's Beyonce. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Yes. Kind of. And at this point, arguably, she's bigger than Beyonce. Oh, you know what? And younger. 
I'm, yeah. a, I'm not. I'm done with you guys today. Oh. <laughs> Instagram models is calling out. But we we are not gonna put Taylor Swift over a Black Beyonce from Black History Month with y'all y'all black asses. There you there you pulling <laughs> out my lines. No, not during Black History Month. Not during February. Y'all can start this bullshit on March first. It ain't happening. Today. No. There you go, Al. I got it. All right. Instagram model is calling out um, airlines for failing to accommodate her large. Booty. Oh God. Uh, uh, sometimes I just gotta be like, uh. she said it's 2024. Bodies are changing, so planes should too. Do you think airlines should make bigger seats to accommodate bigger booties? Al Reynolds, what say you? <laughs> just like she paid for that booty, she need to pay for that extra seat to accommodate that booty. I mean overweight people have to pay for the extra seat if they can't fit in the seat why should she be treated any differently mm. you know what you're right armand do you think he's right i just blame this on this all inclusivity culture on this you know plus size culture i blame it on that don't get upset now that the woman wants you to you know create an extra seat for her ass when you know we've justified people being obese for many many years and we've tried to include that as being right and healthy and okay and you know if they can get extra seats then you know what if i decide to go get a 10 times bbl then you know what make an extra seat for me my ass should be included just like this person's big wide ass too you know what I mean? Because I feel like, listen, if we would have never started to include that and try to normalize being overweight, then we wouldn't have these problems. Boy, you go, you go, you, you go get it. You might be more. This is the than truth. Me. This might is be the truth. truth. Yes, we have more this, we have normalized, this is the Lizzo culture. We have normalized obesity. We have tried to normalize being overweight and eating unhealthy. And now you're mad when people are going to get these unhealthy, oversized bodies. <laughs> Now you're mad because they want to be included? Make the seat. America, you normalize this bullshit. Make the seat for free. That's my thought. I don't know what I'm supposed to say about this. Because <laughs> <laughs> y'all know this speechless? Well, I have a little devil and a little angel on my shoulders, and they both tell me very opposite things. And I already know how this is going to go if I say it. Right. So I'm gonna let Armand get all the smoke online, for this, <laughs> and we're gonna move on. Okay, Usher was a featured in a recent Skims marketing campaign, and it has everyone's jaws on the floor. Did you see the campaign, and what are your thoughts, Alice? Go to you first. Yes, I did see the campaign, and you know, Usher Usher is 45 years old. Um, he looks great. I'm excited about his new album. I know he's going to kill it at the Super Bowl. He's a black male legend, still keeping, you know, keeping it, keeping his body in shape. Look at that. He does. It, it, that doesn't look like a forty-something-year-old dude's body. Um, I just got to give a shout out to Janetta Patton. It's, I think it's her last name, Patton. I know her first name is Janetta, his mother. You did a great job with managing him and to watch him. I know you're not working together anymore, but to watch him just flourish and and multiply has to make you feel real proud as a mom. All right, Armand, what do you think? Well, when I saw this, I said to myself, you know what, Usher, I might take the risk. You know Ooh. what, Armand? <laughs> <laughs> you know, just pop oh, a honestly. pill or two. <laughs> yeah, just like, if I double strap it, you know what? You know, I might take the risk. They say if it ain't nothing showing up, it's no, then you're good. You know? Uh, you but can always. <laughs> but listen, but honestly, I think that Usher looks great. That good black does not crack and i love that for us okay and one one thing i will also say is that kim kardashian she gets it right she under she's like a marketing genius and she knows the right time and when to get the right people and it right. just works and and i just that the brain on her with the talent that she gets it's just like it's just like she knows how to create moments and create stars all over again and it just looks so great and i love the fact that usher is what like Damn near what thirty years in the game, and he's almost emerging like a new artist, uh, almost again, you know. So mm -hmm. he's having another run, and I mm -hmm. love this for him. So shout out to Usher, you know, despite the nasty, vile things that Kiki Palmer's mother alleged on him. Oh God, here, That's yes, true. Claudia, yes. What, 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 what are you talking about? Where she said Usher was gay. Ooh, 
Yeah, you missed that me audio out. She said, I sure <laughs> "Okay, she no, used I was, the F word." <laughs> I know, I know. I just wanted to make sure that we were talking about the same yes. thing. Yes, yeah, yeah. He caught a stray that day, huh? Mm -hmm. And we swept it under the rug. But you know what? Let me ask you another question. <laughs> and Let he, me ask and he doesn't have a nose ring. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask a question though. Have we ever seen Usher's dad? Who is his daddy? I don't know. Where is he? <laughs> Look at Claudia. Why are you not talking? Open that mouth. Later, Jelsey Smollett is requesting. <laughs> she got, she got, she got serenade when she went to go see Usher in Vegas. So she, you know, she's uh, not gonna say too much. Okay, not too much heat. Uh, I, okay, yeah, I, Claudia got all the friends, so she can't really talk. Okay, I right. like Usher, and I remember when I worked in radio when I was in college, we broke like, like his album, a song just called me the Mac. I think he was twelve. I love to see this reemergence of his career, and I, I love Usher. If you have a chance to get to a show ever, it's like one of the best shows I've ever, ever been to in my life. Usher, I salute you. Kim Kardashian, if anyone says you don't have a talent, they're full of it because your marketing, like Al said, is next level. Like in Armand, you are the goat at this. I really do believe that. Mm. So, anyways, yeah, and I'm trying to stay out of trouble because we have Armand here to get in trouble for us. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse Smollett is requesting the court to overturn his conviction. Stay tuned. Oh, Lord. Y'all setting me up again. We'll be right back. <laughs> Freedom, it's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear, to jog where we please, to wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. Liking it, Dustin. I love it here. I love sparring with you. I love talking trash with Claudia. T G I F. What y'all drinking on? Buttery Chardonnay, my go-to when it comes to spilling this tea. 1942, baby. It's been a celebration all week. Every weekday. Yeah. Are you gonna have any left? I buy the big bottles, Al. <laughs> <laughs> How big is it? <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's not be sexually harassing our co-hosts this early in the show. Not saying we won't. It just gonna be this early. <laughs> on Fox Soul. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Cause when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. My mom wanted my life to be better than what she had as a kid. When I became a mom myself, I feel like my whole world changed. You don't have to be a climate scientist to want to protect the earth. You always want the next generation to have something better than what you had. Welcome back to TGIF. Megan The Stallion is celebrating going number one on Billboard. Watch this clip. This is my first time since, since my mama been alive that I really carried the weight of paying for my whole shit. So to see how much I love Hiss and Cobra, like I'm like, wow! We didn't have no help. I really hope y'all know how much of the trenches we was in. I really bet it on myself. All right, do you think this is well-deserved, Armand? Let's go to you first. Actually, I think this is very well-deserved for Magna Stallion. Shout out to her for getting her number one as an independent artist and retaining her master. So I'm really excited for her. I'm excited for this next era. And I believe that Magna Stallion is changing the game and a lot of these girls should be nervous. So congratulations, yeah. man. I am so, um, shocked okay. Armand said something so sweet. Yes. What? I mean, you want me to, I mean, I'm, listen. No, 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 in it, period. You're good. You're so good, Armand. No, but it's You're true. So good. It's a, like, it's it's hard work. She's, when you, when a person spends their own money. Yes. I'm here for it. 
And it would be good if it other women can kind of follow in these footsteps and retain their masters and have more power because I think that's such a power move. And yeah. I hope the younger girlies take away from that because that is the story of all of this, right? Mm -hmm. And the, the money she's going to make. Al, what do you think about this story? You know, of course, <clears throat> I love the fact that it's her first solo song and it debuted at number one. You can't take that from her. But the streets are talking and they're screaming pretty loud. They're saying that if Nicki Minaj didn't do what she did and make this such a spectacle, that maybe uh, that's what helped Megan Thee Stallion get to number one. What do you guys think about that, Armand? Well, that's absolutely 100% accurate. Okay. Had Nicki Minaj not went on that tirade, uh, this record would have definitely not debuted at number one. Um, a lot of the support for this record comes out of spite because people did not like, you know, the nasty things that Nicki Minaj said, especially, you know, lying on your dead mama. Yeah, so a lot of people went and supported Magnus Stein. To me, this kind of a little bit reminds me of Remy Ma winning Best New Female, uh, Best Female Rapper back in 2017 at the BT Hip Hop Awards. Everybody was cheering because they felt like it was a loss for Nicki Minaj. So right now, you know, this is a whack to Nicki Minaj that uh, Megan Thee Stallion debuts at this level. Um, but either way, it's part of the game. So a win is a win, and Nicki it, uh, this did is this. true. This is true. You know what I hate? I hate that it seems like when it comes to Nicki Minaj and other artists, like we cannot just celebrate the person without her name being brought into it. Mm. And, and and this point is, it's a self-inflicted wound. She didn't have to say anything and she could have just let the song do what it do and stayed out of it. And then, so there is an argument to be made that yes, there are some people that did not like what, what Nicki said and went and supported Megan. Me, I'm not really into all that because I think us on the internet, Think the world is the internet. The world is not the internet. There's a lot of people that are not really into blogs, YouTubers, even TJF that really have no idea what's going on. But we don't really see that because our world isn't that. There are people that, I like the song. I had it on repeat in the gym. It was like a good motivational song. And I'm not going to spite one for the other. Yo, I was blasting F the club up a couple weeks ago because I think that, I love that song by Nicki Minaj. And I hate that we can't just like, it's almost like a guilt thing. Like if you support one, you can't support the other. Mm. I can't like Cardi if I like Nicki. And I think that's so whack. And I think the fans play a part in this. I think we need to be the ones to be like, yo, it's okay to like Megan and Nicki and Cardi and not be against the other. Like I, when Nicki drops some fire, I'm gonna support that too. I really am, you know? And just cause I like, like Meg right now, that don't mean I hate Nicki. And I think that outside of our world, a lot more people think like that, you know? But the internet, we kind of like on a side, I think, you know? All mm -hmm. right, but it's still a win. It's a win in hip hop. Jesse Smollett is trying his best to avoid prison after being found guilty of five felonies related to his 2019 stage hate crime. This will be the second time Jesse has submitted a request to the Supreme Court in hopes of overturning his conviction. Should more time be added to criminal sentences who waste the court's time and resources? Al, what do you think? Oh, Claudia, you really are lighting the fire today. Um, You guys know that I was a, a, a commentator, lead commentator on the five-part docuseries here at Fox Nation. Um, I really don't understand what he's doing. I spent hours on hours on hours going through the court documents and, and, and all of that. And I've said this before in the past, he just really needs to turn the page on this. Um, even if you do get off in the courts, Public opinion has already made their mind up and it's going on five years. I, I, I really feel like he should just turn the page. It's a, cut, a couple of thousand dollars he needs to pay. Make this go away. Get back to your career. Get back to your family's legacy and leave this alone. And should people pay? I think if you're going to continue to waste, you know, taxpayer dollars, because it's our dollars that's paying for all of this, he definitely should get not probably added time, but maybe more added fines. Mm, he ain't on Empire no more, so he ain't really got that. Armand, what do you think? Uh, really, they should have locked her ass up when they had the chance. Uh, Jesse Smollett, you wasted the people's time. You deserve to pay. You deserve the time. You deserve whatever they get, whatever they give you, because it was just, that was a waste of time, and you committed to the lie. You yeah. know what I mean? And you mm -hmm. had all of And then it was the, then I don't like when, it's the LGBT because, you know, the public loves to trash gay people. So then when you are gay and you make it a hate crime, people love to say, see these gays, they, they always want to play the victim. So you just set us back a, a, a few steps. So I'm not with Jesse Smollett on any of this. I'm actually disgusted by Jesse Smollett. And I, as far as I'm concerned, lock her ass up and throw away the key. So you don't think he can come back from this? You think he's pretty much dug his grave and, and pretty much covering itself up. 
I personally feel as though, you know, everybody, you're always going to look at Jesse Smollett as the liar. Maybe he'll work here and there behind the scenes, but no one's ever going to take him serious. He'll always, you know, you'll al he'll always have to hear a joke. Are you lying, Jesse? Is he sure that's the truth? You know what I mean? You're never going to be able to escape, you know, a lie joke. Right. <laughs> the sad thing is, he was already on a good trajectory to yeah. superstardom. He was doing so well. That show was breaking all kinds of records. He didn't have to do any of this. And there's a small part of me that wishes there was some truth to this because, of course, the MAGA thing involved. I wanted that to be true, but it wasn't, and it's sad. And Jesse, do a tell-all, come out, be accountable, be humble, and yeah. people will forgive you. People have forgiven worse, but sticking with it is what's hurting you, I think. Yeah. All right, y'all, fun show. If we're not canceled, we'll be back here tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and y'all, don't be in my inbox mad about what uh, Armand's saying on this show. I tried my best. <sighs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. But we had a fun time. Thank you so much, Armand. You did a great job. And Al, thank, thank you. you so much. I know you're going through a lot right now, so we appreciate it. <clears> thank you, Armand. On YouTube, stay tuned for Fox Soul Face Off. And if uh, standards and practice <laughs> don't get involved, we'll see you back here tomorrow. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>